Okay, to give you a better idea of how this system works, we'll show you here the Mark II prototype, pretty much where it all began, which was the Mark I, but tidied up quite a lot, uh, and with a few different components. But the critical components here are the valves. So we start with the oxygen valve. This valve has quite a high flow resistance, so the pressure downstream on this side is much lower than the four bar that supplied upstream of it. And we can open that valve to allow as much oxygen as we want into the reservoir. The air valve is a very similar component, in fact it's exactly the same component, but it's connected to a gas supply of air. So we can control the amount of time that the oxygen and the air valves are open, and thereby control the concentration of oxygen in the reservoir, which will eventually get delivered to the patient. So these valves are connected to the reservoir by this manifold here. This just has basically open pathways, so they're all connected to the same bit of gas. Here we have a pressure sensor, so we use that to monitor the pressure in the reservoir. In the reservoir we need to get not only the right pressure, but also the right mix of gas. So the pressure, allows us, pressure sensor allows us to monitor that. And we have a, a safety feature here, which is a pressure relief valve. If the pressure in the reservoir exceeds one bar, that lets gas out so that it will never exceed that value. And then here we have a connection to the inhalation pathway. So this valve is similar to the other two valves, the oxygen and the air valve, but it has a lower resistance to flow, but it still restricts it somewhat so that the up to one bar pressure in the reservoir gets reduced significantly by the time it reaches a patient. Just downstream of there, we measure the pressure. And because of the pressure drop across the valve is very predictable based on fluid dynamics principles, we can calculate very precisely the flow rate moving from the reservoir to the patient. So just downstream of where this second pressure sensor is, we have another pressure relief valve. This one's a lower pressure, it's 80 centimetres of water. So that protects the patient in case anything goes wrong and the pressure goes too high here. There's no way it can exceed this number and that will protect harm from the patient. We then have this connector that goes off via the ventilation tubing to the patient. When the patient's exhaling, the, uh, this, the breath comes back in from this side into this single exhalation valve which just vents to the atmosphere and this is on or off depending on where you are in the cycle and we time the turning off specifically so the pressure in the system is exactly the same as the pressure in the lung and it just stops once and that's the end of the breath it also in doing it this way has a very low resistance to flow and that enables a rapid exhalation which is very important when the resistance of the lungs is high